All right. So you get to L.A. and your goal is acting. You're doing modeling. Yeah. Okay. How does this turn into entering into the porn industry? Yeah. So I. These are big. There's a, yeah. you know, for some, maybe that's not a big difference because you can do kind of, you know, soft core stuff in even in, in Hollywood. But it's also a big, it is a different industry. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that was almost how I transitioned into it because I was I was saying yes to some stuff um, with HBO that was not far from porn. Um, and then I had done some photography that was like not nude, but as close as it could possibly be. Um, how does that feel doing that stuff? Like, like for the honestly, it, it, it's, it felt like my conscious, like progressively justified it. Mm. So it wasn't that big of a deal. And to be honest, because the way that I was living, I, you know, I like very promiscuous with, with girls, like not, you know, I just, I didn't think about that. So because I was accustomed to to living that way, when I was being, you know, asked if I was okay with doing these things, I was like, sure, because these are things I'm already doing in my private life anyway. Um, so kind of the segue was, I was saying yes to things that were somewhat, sh you know, shady <laughs> and, um, I was, you know, to kind of, you know, mitigate my income, just like most people. It's like you, I was working at uh, this place where they don't take resumes. You take headshots at this restaurant <laughs> and um, in the middle of West Hollywood, Saddle Ranch, Chop House. There's like a mechanical bull in the middle of the place. And just one of those places, it's like a restaurant until it's not. And then it's a crazy bar. But I was working there and three girls walked in and pretty much they were, they were asked me, hey, do you want to be an actor? And I was like, sure. And they're like, well, we're, we're talking about pornography. And I was like, what? Did you feel offended or flattered? Uh, both. I felt, I felt offended because like my, my reasonable part of my conscience was like, if you do that, you're going to burn, you know, so many bridges. And like, yeah, I knew in, my heart, like, this is not a good thing. But at the same time, I felt flattered because they asked. And there was this part of my identity that I was wrestling with. It's like, am I ever good? Am I good enough to ever like truly make it? Mm. And then I thought, well, I don't know. And I was already living this way. So the only thing difference was there was a camera and a check. So I said, yes, thinking that what big deal like it wouldn't be a big deal and this was before like you know media is media was very different like this is like 2006 so this is like pre-facebook or right. right at the beginning this is when right this is when uh myspace is like at its <laughs> so this is and so there's no only fans there's no, no tiktok there's no instagram so in a sense there was a little bit more maybe feeling of anonymity yeah around, hey, I can do some maybe porn scenes, but that doesn't mean my whole social network immediately will know it unless they're like looking at pornography. Was that kind of the sense? It was my thought, but I was very wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I did one I did one film and it went somewhat viral. And what was that like the lead up to that? So you're talking to these girls in a bar, yeah, you agree I mean, to do it. Yeah. Are they involved in porn too? Yeah, they? so they were headhunters. Okay. Yeah, so, so they, they go to restaurants and find girls and aspiring guys. models and actors and just pick them up for porn. Yeah, they're, they're pretty. So the, the way they do that is like, hey, we would love to introduce you to our agent. Mm. And it's interesting that, um, you know, I, I think that uh, it's such an interesting thing to look at because like the coercion that happens within language, like mm. if, if you call something something different than what it is and there's a layer of like familiarity to it, mm. it could lead to compromise where if you call things what they were, you would you would be shocked by them. Why? What did they call it? Well, they were just, I mean, just saying that, well, for them, they were using familiar language and that, hey, we're going to introduce you to our agent. Mm -hmm. And just the fact that it's called the adult film industry. It's yeah. like, are, is that <laughs> acting like an adult? Certainly not, you know? Um, and there are these like actual films that require writing and art and, you know, yeah. beautiful production in the same way other films do. Right. But so, so the same. but that's how he, he kind of got me though, because... Um, so I, I go to this, this office and I was thinking, okay, this is going to be like 
this sketchy situation. I'm going to like go to like a Motel 6 and there's going to be a guy like picking lint out of his belly button or something like super weird. And I'm just going to get out of there. But it was in Studio City and it was adjacent to like where Universal Studios is. And it was this in this big, beautiful business complex. And I walk in and there's this English guy sitting there and um, he had like a big double Windsor tie. Mm. And he asked me three questions. He said, um, what are you doing in LA? Oh, um, no, what do you say? Uh, oh, how did you grow up? Mm. What are you doing in LA and what do you hope to accomplish? And I said, well, pretty much it was just me and my mom. And, and he's thinking, bingo. Sure. Like he's, he's, he's asking for, you know, ammunition to manipulate with. So yeah, like broken home. Um, what, what are you, you know, why are you in LA? It's like, I want to do acting and modeling and what do you hope to accomplish? Well, if I would just say, be very careful if you find yourself saying what I said, I want to be famous. Mm -hmm. Because being famous is not a goal to obtain. It's actually a, a really clear indication that there's something broken in you that you feel like if enough people knew my name, if I make enough money, if I did enough X, Y, and Z, I would feel validated because I mm -hmm. currently don't. So that's what that's saying. It, but that's what I said. I want to be famous. And he was like, great. Um, he's like, I could I could make you really well known in this industry. And because you have an acting background, the industry is actually, actually shifting in their parodying movies. And a lot of people are putting a lot of money into production. And you can be the lead in all these films. Wow. So it would be so advantageous for you that you have acting experience and that's a passion of yours because we can leverage that to make sure you're the guy and the the sad part was none of those things were lies all those things came to fruition but just not how you would think so i said i said okay i'll do one thinking that what you're saying is okay but i'm going to do one i'll try it out what harm could it do to me personally um and then, honestly, the, the way that I was living, he was like, well, the first thing we do is there's a specific lab that everyone goes to because we want to get, you know, consistent data points. So everyone does full panel STD and AIDS tests from the same place so that, make, that we make sure that everyone's safe. So I was like, I probably could use to do that. I've been <laughs> living you know, a very, you know, a you know, unclean life. So thanks for the free test. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much what I was thinking. Like, yeah. okay, great. And I, and I do the test and everything comes back fine. And he sets up the scene and I get there. And from the time that I got there, it, it was so much different than what I thought, because I thought, you know, back, back at this time, it's like, you know, I didn't know anything about a camera other than like a handheld, like little, you know, hundred dollar Canon. And, um, I, I walk on the set and there's a receptionist and, said, fill this out. This is how you get paid. And I saw, you know, filled out like a, a W2, W4, whatever, and then filled out this contract. And I signed my name a bunch of times, but I didn't read it. You know, I was nervous. I like, I wouldn't think, I was like, okay, I'm going to have sex with someone and they're going to pay me. Do you me. know what it said, that contract? Well, well, now I do. What did it say? Well, ultimately you're, you're signing away all, so you're, you're signing an independent contractor contract and also you're signing away all rights to any images, sound bites, or video. In addition to that, the last signature was that they can sell that content parsed as many times as they want to as many third parties as possible, and it doesn't have a limit. Mm -hmm. So meaning that I've done a thousand movies, I, I did a thousand movies in six years, and it's it's been parsed into a hundred thousand pieces of, of content sold to, you know, uh, there's you know, there's dubbed versions that are in different countries that are, that are played in hotels. My, my likeness is on, you know, not, not as much anymore, but my likeness was on sex toys, my, you know, posters, um, dating websites, fake profiles, and all this stuff was everywhere because there was this level of, well, even though it was my face, it was tied to a fictitious name. And that in itself should point to the level of shame in that industry because the first thing you do, he said that I would make your name famous, yet the first thing I did was surrender my name mm -hmm. and choose another one. So 
that in itself, if you, you know, to the person saying, I love what I do, why is the first thing you do is you change your name that points directly to shame? 